Hi, I'm Brady Forrest with O'Reilly Media here at Web 2.0 Summit, and luckily enough, I ran into Ryan Block, former editor-in-chief of Engadget, right. and yep. now co-founder of Gadget, spelled G-D-G-T dot com. That's right, thanks. How's it going? Good, how's it going? Thanks for the, agreeing to this ambush. Yeah, yeah no problem. <laughs> well, yeah, this is, it, it's an exciting event here, so you know you want to get in the get in the mix. Yeah, so how's Gadget going? Great, it's going great. Yeah, so um, we're working on a ton of stuff right now. So mm -hmm. I, a lot of it I can't exactly talk about. Yep. Maybe in like two weeks. Yep. Um, but yeah, we're like we're we're gearing up for CES next year, um, which is obviously a kind of the, the Super Bowl of the gadget world. And um, you know, we're we're working on a lot of really cool stuff around uh, product reviews. Um, so that's been really interesting for us. So and how uh, ha you know how has the vision of Gadget changed since you first since you and Peter first started it? Um, it's 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 the same and it's different. I mean. Mm -hmm. We started it because we saw so much potential around um, user-generated content um, and just all the knowledge that people have about their products that is kind of locked up. There was mm -hmm. no easy way to share all that knowledge. And um, you know, at Engadget, it was very top-down. So you know, it was a, a small team of editors sharing their knowledge about the consumer electronics industry to a very broad audience. And what we kind of discovered early on was that so many of the readers of Engadget knew all this great stuff about things that we like couldn't even touch mm -hmm. and uh, and so we were starting to learn more from the audience it felt like sometimes than they were learning from us at least in aggregate and so the idea with gadget was how do we unlock all that and how do we you know share this expertise uh, across uh, all these different users and so that was like the original core vision I think that's still the vision uh, the difference is we, we really just kind of learned what to focus the experiences on and so in the beginning it was just like it was a lot of you know kind of wiki style and mm -hmm. Um, we did like a lot of stuff with like tips and tricks, and you know some of that stuck and some of it didn't. But what we what we discovered was um, the reviews process that we built, which is kind of based on um, having individual criteria for each product, um, is something that people find a lot of value in. What does so, that mean? Well, what it means is like if you're looking for a cell phone, um, you don't actually have to go look at just you know all these bl huge blocks of text that are kind of impenetrable from. Um, you know, people just spouting off. We actually ask you kind of in a survey style, like, how is the screen quality? How is huh. the battery life? How is the reception? And so you go through and you rank all of these individual things, then we give you histograms and comments um, about those specific topics. So if you go to like the iPhone 4, the iPhone 4S, um, and you look at how people rate the screen, it's like all at the highest end of the spectrum and wow. very little anywhere else. And yeah. so you kind of start to see the truth in numbers, which is that, you know, it's actually a really good screen. It's not just that, you know, a couple people shout it out here and there. We ask you every single time you write a review, how's the screen or how mm -hmm. is the reception mm -hmm. or how's the battery life or if it's GPS, how's the accuracy, how's the speed? Um, and so, you know, that's something that people really respond to really well to. Now, I've also noticed uh, that you and Peter have stepped up kind of doing editorial content again. Like, I thought. A little bit. Yeah, we, yeah, we your, do a newsletter. Steve, no or I guess your last Apple Note. Right, yeah. And, yeah, your newsletter I get. So, how? what's the strategy with that? Um, I don't know if it's necessarily a strategy per se. <laughs> I mean, is it you scratching know, your own itch to. Kind keep of, writing? yeah. I mean, like, we, you know, we love. We love to share our opinions and, and see this conversation. And I mean, mm -hmm. that's, I think that's really what's at the core is like, you know, getting people active engaged and thinking about, um, you know, how they feel about things that are going on in this, in this sphere and, uh, and, and sharing those opinions and knowledge. Um, so that's, that's kind of always at the core of what we do. Um, the Apple stuff is, you know, I just, I love to go and, and see the, what, you know, what they launch. And there's of obviously course. a lot of excitement about that. So, so you know, while I have you here, what, what is exciting in the gadget world these um, days? <laughs> you know, I, I'm actually so I'm I'm uh, I'm doing a like a little keynote or something at um, at the Launchpad event later this week, and that's uh, an event in um, I think Mountain View, all about tablets. And um, mm -hmm. I, I'm actually still kind of fiddling with what my exact thesis is, but um, in the tablet space, which is obviously really you know very high profile right now. Uh, the Kindle Fire is, I think, really, really interesting. Yep. Um, you know, they've got something going on there, which I think for the first time really answers the question of why should I buy this tablet instead of an iPad, which, mm -hmm. you know, we've seen dozens and dozens of tablets from some of the biggest, you know, consumer electronics companies in the world. Nobody's really answered that question yet. Um, so I think Amazon might have a shot, and, you know, the $200 price point is, uh, is pretty outstanding. What do you think is the difference? Or $250 price point. Um, you know, I think it's really about getting people to understand, you know, if, if what you're looking for is to consume media. Um, mm -hmm. And I think yeah. that's what most people kind of think about a tablet for. 
um, then not only can you focus on that value proposition and say like this is a great device for consuming media it's not going to replace your computer it's not going to replace your phone but uh, you know this is something really good that you can watch movies on through you know through the Amazon store and get Amazon books on and stuff like that while at the same time being you know inexpensive enough that people don't feel like they've been you know really taken advantage of uh, yep. buying something that is you know not quite at, at the same value um, as a more multi-purpose device like an iPad. So, you know, like RIM's Playbook, which is a very similar device, obviously costs significantly more money and, you know, doesn't really seem to have as coherent a message. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. I haven't really been able to make heads or tails of the Playbook. Yeah. And even though it's backed, just like Amazon, you know, Amazon's backed by like a whole cloud division, basically, and all these web services, Messenger is, or Playbook is too, and just, yeah. Yeah, I mean, every, everybody's kind of doing the same thing right now, mm -hmm. um, but very few of them are, are, you know, pulling it together in something that's like a coherent product and something that even resembles a strategy. I mean, Google is doing some pretty interesting things on Android, but I think that they're doing their best work on the phones. And mm -hmm. the tablet is just almost an afterthought right now. And, you know, we haven't really seen them push that forward very much, uh, whereas they've been very competitive on the phone side. So I mean, maybe maybe Amazon's going to be able to uh, to respond. I mean, I think honestly, like the price is the biggest thing for them. Um, they're the only people who've been able to get it under you know that like four hundred to five hundred dollar mark yep. with with something interesting, um, and that isn't like a stripped down you know like the the Samsung Galaxy Tab Seven, which was you know didn't really do particularly well. It wasn't super expensive, but it was also kind of just like a really stripped down experience, and it wasn't even running a tablet OS. So mm -hmm. I think. I think Amazon's got something. Uh, got well, something. Amazon going took like a really early version of Android. Do you think that's going to hamper them long term? Do you well, think so they're like they're forking it, and yeah. you know they're they're doing their own app store. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I think if it doesn't work out for them, they can still kind of bank on the embedded experience aspect of it, which is like you don't have to run Android apps. I mean, I know that that's part of their message, but it doesn't have to be their core message. Their core message, I think, can still be read your books get mm -hmm. your media, you know, mm -hmm. have, have like a decent cloud, cloud-based media experience on this thing at, you know, the 200 to $250 price point. That's still compelling, even if it doesn't do all the other things that, uh, that some tablets do. Now, what do you think happens to the e-ink tablets? I ordered a Touch. I ordered yeah, a I, I, touch. Can't, I can't wait to get a Touch. I don't know if anything happens to it because it's a different reading experience and it's also at a very different price point. So, you know, the newest Kindle, the Kindle 4, is $80. I mean, yeah, that's like, it's, amazing. it's we're finally at that level where it's like, you really don't have a whole lot of reason not to buy it. And mm -hmm. you can amortize the cost of the hardware if you're an avid reader, you know, in a couple of months. Whereas a few years ago, the original Kindle was like 300 bucks. You know, it would take you years to kind of amortize that cost with, with, with uh, the lower cost of eBooks. So, I mean, I think that there's still a, a, a place for those products. It's kind of like the iPod, where it's like it's around for now. It won't be around forever. And I think it's going to do well for them now, but it, you know, eventually we'll move away from it. Um, but I think some of that just has to do with the screen technology. Um, reading on e-ink is just so much more pleasurable, at least for me, and I, I think for most other people, uh, than reading on like a bright LCD. Well, to wrap it up, what do you uh, do? You have any inside knowledge on ice cream sandwich? <laughs> the, the next release of Android? Not, not a ton. No. no, I mean, I you know, I I Are actually you fly out to Hong Kong. For the, for the <laughs> I'm not. I'm not intending on it. <laughs> I'll probably just watch the live stream. Are you going to be there? No, no. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, I I tend to follow the Apple side a little bit more closely. Uh -huh. um, I mean, I do think you know, like I said, Google is doing some really really interesting stuff, and uh, I I want them to get there. I want them to be a little bit more of uh, you know. Uh, be able to match the user experience, the quality of user experience that Apple has. And they, they get a little bit closer each time. Um, and it looks like Ice Cream Sandwich might you know, be their closest yet. But we're going to have to wait and see. All right. Well, thank you very much for uh, joining me today. Thanks for having me.